Well, hello, welcome to I Love Gay Today. And we are back in South Africa. And we are here with Ms. Campbell from Johannesburg. How are you? <laughs> I am pretty tight, pretty constricted, but I'm lovely. <laughs> well, you look fabulous. Thank you so much. But no, it's interesting. Uh, there, there's a lot going on. In fact, uh, as I was describing earlier, we've uh, we've actually interviewed uh, Shanae O'Brien, and and uh, and actually we also had uh, in the music world from South Africa, um, AJ. But there's like this whole world of LGBTQ life in South Africa that's just emerging on on social media now. <laughs> you won't believe it, and I think it's merely the generation that I've come from from the '90s. I think a lot of us are just realizing that. There's no time in the present to make sure that you are seen and you are heard for whichever reason you want to be. So it's, it's a lovely thing to be a part of. But what's, uh, what sets you apart is that uh, for three years now, you have the <laughs> honor and the title of Miss Drag South Africa. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. So yeah, I was crowned. I entered the competition late 20, 2019 and then... The pandemic just crept up on us and we were all told to be secluded and stuff. So we waited to hear about the competition. And then later on, they just sent us a big catalog of things that we needed to accomplish throughout the time where we would literally had to become the muse, the mannequin, the photographer. You became the designer. You became yeah. what a drag queen really is, somebody who creates something out of nothing. So that's also the main initiative and why I entered Miss Drag South Africa is because yeah. I'm a multifaceted human being and I've got so many skills at the moment and I just turned 30 so I feel like a well accomplished human being so it's yeah. been an absolute amazing journey. I love that and uh, <laughs> I noticed I noticed when I was uh, researching and reading more about Miss Drag South Africa overall it seems to set itself apart it says we are drag with a purpose. Correct. So that's the main ethos behind the whole um, pageant. It is a national pageant here in South Africa. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is the highest national title a drag queen or a drag performer could have in South Africa. So yeah. I am heavily honored and like it's just <laughs> something else for three years. So I really got into push my push my agenda and push my vision that I would love to see for younger generations and just all queer artists who are out there. Yeah, but you've been doing this since what, 2015? Uh, you could say 2015, 2016, because yeah. it was pride that kicked off <laughs> my whole initiative when it came to participating with pride, because pride was just somewhere where I dressed up just for the fun of it, because I'm somebody who loves the theme. So <laughs> when they said embody your queerness, I literally embodied my queerness. Like I wanted to show people that being a designer and being somebody who is a creator, you don't really have to like play down on your skills because people want to see things. People are people love shiny things. People love to touch things. <laughs> I really just went off the fact that how people were fascinated and young kids were just so drawn to me when when they saw the color, when they saw the presence. So it was a big push for me when when it came to Pride because yeah. everybody got to get together. And I really got to put all my skills to use. Well, it, it shows. In fact, let's take a moment here and take a, few, uh, take a look at some of your clips from Pride and so forth.
I, I love those. And, uh, but um, it's interesting because we see that side of you, but, um, uh, but by, by day or, you know, your normal uh, part of life, you're a robotics engineer that like, that blows my mind. <laughs> it is one of the most impressive skills I think I have because yeah. I literally teach kids how to build robots and how to code them yeah. to literally complete the skills that you want because it is based around education so you literally have to create the concept for kids to accomplish you've got to have an end goal you've got to have like an initiation so it is like a whole school syllabus but just a lot more fun and has mm. a lot more aspects when it comes to getting involved and coming up with a solution yeah no as a side note uh, you may not know about me i i was an aerospace engineer once upon a time that is insane <laughs> there's a few of us out there like look at us now who, who would have yeah, known who would have known people are just out here smart queer and fabulous so. <laughs> <laughs> you know and you know there we talk about uh, that side of your life but i was reading something um that really caught me um uh, it, it really did uh, which was just that you were born and raised in a part of johannesburg where you had st stated that was the only part of johannesburg where people of color were allowed to live um well that's, that's wild <laughs> well not really just like uh, well it's known for where colored people really picked up the banner in westbury the area of johannesburg that i come yeah, from because yeah. it is your el dorado park where people of color did come from and branch out into other suburbs around Johannesburg. So yeah. for me, Westbury was such a close-knit community. It was legitimately a box. So if you look at, looked at it on a box, it literally yeah. was four corners. And I literally lived on the border. So I didn't even get to experience the full-fledged viciousness that this community did have because there was yeah. a lot of drugs, there was a lot of violence, there was a lot of gangs. There was a moment where I was walking with my mom and my sister and some drive-by just happened and I, my nephew got shoved into a bush. I just stood there because I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. And there's a guy who up the window like with the gun and stuff. I just stood there because I was so drawn back by this because it's something that you only see in a movie. But yeah, yeah. if you think about how real life stories happen, it, it's just crazy that... I found the, or my parents really pushed me into making sure that my skills got developed because I did find out that I had like ADHD and ADD when I was younger. So I grew out of that when I came into my matric year. So yeah. it was a whole entire journey of just learning to accept the community I came from and realizing that there wasn't a queer body that I could go and confide in. But I did have a lot of queer friends who we created groups and made yeah. sure that we pushed our agenda as much as we possibly could, even if it yeah. was in sports or academics. Well, I was diagnosed with ADHD as a child as well. And uh, <laughs> and uh, look at us. We have so much look in common. Look how the brains are. Look how massive the brains are. It's like, Do it's like those sort of kids really needed a push like for us. Yeah. Like they tried to dampen a lot of the smarts by thinking we were overactive and stuff when it wasn't, just needed to point us in the right direction where we could thrive. And look <laughs> at us now. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But you, uh, uh, speaking of the where you grew up, yeah, but um, you go back there every once in a while, right? You kind of, you. Uh, Correct. Yes. yes. I run a feeding kitchen with my mom in the community of Westbury every Tuesday and Friday, where we feed a maximum of seven to 800 people on each of those days. So yeah. it's a, and my parents are still there. So I still have a really strong and deep connection with that place because a lot of them are seeing me now fully embrace myself, even in the community. Like I didn't think a lot of parents would have been so drawn to me in terms of realizing the talent and realizing that there are other avenues for queer bodies or even just children to find avenues to make sure your skills go. Yeah, yeah. It's really been an honor. Well, what's on the on the horizon, especially as we enter uh, 2023 soon? Any exciting things coming up? Uh, it is, like, there's just so much. And yeah. throughout my three-year journey now, it's it's like there's so many milestones that have come and have gone. Yeah. At the moment, I'm 
I'm a very big judge at the moment in South Africa. I've been on multiple judges panels for many pageants that have existed here in Joburg. Might it have been for smaller individuals or even um, older individuals as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to be on the panel for the Royal ZA pageant, which is a also a national pageant for, uh, I would say, straight people. <laughs> really aim for uh, straight people so I'm just there to make sure that the representation is shown and um, and Pride is coming as well here in Joburg it's oh, going to yeah. be the 1st of October it is really going to be our kickoff within the next few days yeah. I am doing a lot of things with a magnitude of different people throughout the Pride month so uh, stay nice. tuned and keep yes. an eye out on my socials you'll be able to find out a lot more about what's going on and what's yeah. my journey yeah. You said it for me. That's what I was going to say is that I'm going to pay attention to you. I'm going to follow you. Uh, I follow you on Twitter, but I know you're quite active on Facebook and Instagram. And so wherever somebody may be. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a lover of Instagram because Instagram is the place where you can really captivate a moment in time where yeah. it's not just stuck in your mind. You'll be able to go and reference it later on. So I have a deep love for Instagram. <laughs> and I saw you're on TikTok too. Uh, <laughs> Um, I couldn't have really on TikTok. I just enjoy TikTok's content and it allows me to utilize graphics and stuff that I've also got under my belt because I've got five different qualifications from four different universities at the moment. So yeah. I just finished my studies as well with the Miss Drag SA title. So when it came to Drag with a Purpose, they really did branch out to make sure that the winner of the contest really felt like they were actually doing drag with yeah. it's been lovely <laughs> excellent well, i look forward to following and paying attention and uh seeing where you go and uh mostly i'm just glad you were able to take a few moments of your time and kind of share a bit of your story <laughs> with our audience here absolutely as much as i can show people across the world that drag is really all over the world yeah. it's not yeah. just a bunch of drag queens saying that it's all over the world she really has influenced the world by her name rupaul charles she really needs to know that yeah. It's putting boundaries where countries are doing, people are, in countries are doing drag we would never have thought. Yeah, that's very inspiring. So, but it's great to see you here and uh, thanks so much for being here. An absolute pleasure. Take care, everybody. It feels good, so good.